Greetings, everyone. Let's take a short break from equation solving to talk about imaginary and complex numbers. This is a small little subtopic uh, that you'll need scattered all throughout college algebra and, and a few other uh, college level math courses. And you just need to know that these other um, sets of numbers are out there and can be used in certain situations. Um, or if you ever go higher in math, I mean, there's entire branches of mathematics that deal with specifically these types of numbers. Uh, but for now, we're going to need it just a few different times in college algebra and uh, the ability to just manipulate them on a basic level. Okay, so imaginary numbers. Let's start right here. The, the idea of imaginary numbers comes from uh, being able to do the square root of negative values. So if I do the square root of 4 and it's 2, what does that really mean? By definition, it means that 2 is a value that when you square it, 2 times 2, right, I get the 4 back. And of course, we typically don't write this this way. The square root of 4, by that definition, could also be listed as negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4, okay? Typically, though, if we want to talk about the negative branch, we put the negative in front of the radical. But by definition, I'm just, you know, generic definition here, you could say that this is a root of 4, right? A square root of 4. <clears throat> so what does it mean to take the square root of a negative number? Because I've already covered 2 and negative 2, and both of those get positive 4. So what value could I multiply by itself? And the answer is negative. The problem here comes in with our rules of multiplication in that when I multiply two of the same thing, I always result in a positive value. Negative times negative, positive times positive, doesn't matter. In multiplication, two of the same sign multiplied give a positive. So when I have a square root of a negative number, it's like asking yourself, how do I unmultiply part of a negative? And, and really, you can't. Right? There's no number in the, in the real number system on the number line that when you square it, you'll get a negative because you need a negative and a positive multiplied to get a negative, but then they're not the same. You're not squaring. Okay, So what turns out to be the, the thing that makes the most sense is for us to just completely create an entire uh, group, an entire listing, an entire set of brand new numbers. And they're called imaginary numbers. And really, they're, they're um, almost, almost exactly identical to our normal number system. And the only difference is they're tagged with this I. Now, let's define what I is, and then you'll see how the number systems are, are very, very similar. Okay? Define I to be the value that, when you square it, gives negative 1. Okay? As a result the square root of negative 1 would then be what we're calling i. Okay, So i is just whatever value it needs to be such that i times i gives negative 1. And what that does is it creates a base unit for this brand new imaginary number system. So then every other bit of the mathematics built in can be exactly the same as our normal real numbers and this i right here handles the negative portion of the square root. Okay, So for example, square root of negative 4 would be 2i. The square root of 4 is still 2, as it always was. right? But then the square root with the negative on the inside has to be tagged with the i, because that handles the square root of the negative 1 portion. And then test it out. If I multiply 2i times 2i, that gives me 4i squared. But i squared, by definition, was negative 1. So that's 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So 2i squared, altogether, does give me negative 4. Okay? If you throw a negative on the outside, don't forget, I can't just bring negatives in and out of square roots. That doesn't work. Okay? So uh, I would do the square root of the negative 49 first, which would give me 7i. And then the negative on the outside is just still there. Notice all that's giving me really is the negative portion of the square root of the negative 49. 
because if I multiply negative 7i times negative 7i, negative times negative is positive 49, and then i times i is i squared, i squared is negative 1, so I get negative 49, right, which is what we're doing the square root of. So negative 7i is also a root of negative 49, okay? And again, our math doesn't change. I just have to be able to recognize that there's a negative underneath the square root in order for all of this to take place, okay? So all of the simplification that we normally do still holds true. Square root of negative 72, I would split up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 2 and the square root of negative 1. You can still split it up into the separate pieces via multiplication, right? Radicals have that ability to split over multiplication. And then you simply work the pieces that you can, right? Square root of 36 is 6. And the square root of negative 1 is what we've defined, well, as a consequence of the definition of i. So then I have 6i square root of 2. All right? Also, if I have just something that normally can't be simplified, like square root of 57, then I just split it square root of negative 1 times square root of 57. And I can't do anything else with the 57. It's just 3 times 19, but neither of those can be simplified in a radical. So I just write it as i square root of 57. And that's considered simplified in that case. Next, we'll generalize this same idea to a more generic form <clears throat> called complex numbers. And this is what happens when you not only have an imaginary portion, but you also still have a real portion, something that would have come from the real number line, and then also the, the something from an imaginary line that we were just talking about. So if you have this situation, you'll have some number plus or, or minus uh, another number with i. Right? You'll have a real portion and an imaginary portion, and that's what makes it complex. Complex meaning, you know, many different parts. Not necessarily difficult. Complex is different parts, right? Um, this whole number system is symbolized with the, the big bold C, like the real number line is the big bold R, and integers are the big bold Z, and things like that. <clears throat> complex numbers is one of the most generic sets of numbers that we study in math. Um, really, it encompasses the imaginary and the real because technically a real number is just plus zero i and an imaginary is zero plus, you know, something i. So technically both of the number systems are inside of complex numbers to begin with. <clears throat> However, what we really need to talk about here is just throughout this course we may run into a complex number here and there and you simply just need to be able to work with them, all right? All right, so uh, let's go through a couple of operations with each one of these, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, just so that you know how these can interact and how when you bring two complex numbers together, you can get another complex number as an answer, all right? It doesn't get more complicated, <laughs> pun intended, uh, than that. So addition and subtraction. You're very familiar with this concept, uh, especially when it comes to things that are linear, um, i to the 1, right? So all it is is combining like terms. When I have a complex number plus another complex number, I'm simply just going to combine the things that are like terms. So I'm going to add the 3 and the 9, and I'm going to add the 2i and the 4i here for a grand total of 12 plus 6i. Okay, so adding two complex numbers gets you another complex number. Subtraction is not that much different, but you have to be careful because a complex number does have two pieces, so the negative sign actually has to apply to both. So technically what I have here is 6 minus 8i minus 2 plus 5i, and then combine like terms just as before. 6 minus 2 is 4, and then negative 8i plus 5i is negative 3i. So addition and subtraction, pretty straightforward, just combining like terms and making sure you're staying within those little arithmetic rules that we use all the time. Okay? Multiplication, 
also not far-fetched from things that you've done. This is what you would have, you know, some people would have called FOIL, first outer, inner, last. Uh, polynomial multiplication is really what it is. I just have to distribute every piece to every piece. So for example, I will multiply five times six, 30. I will multiply five times I, so five I. I will multiply four I times six, plus 24 I. And then I'll multiply four I times I, which will be plus four I squared, okay? Now remember, the whole idea is when I multiply two complex numbers, I should receive a complex number back. And it looks like that got more complicated with an I squared. But wait a minute, remember the definition of I squared, right? Definition of I squared is negative one. So what is this really? This is really a negative four value because I squared is negative one. Okay, so then combine all your like terms. I've got 30 minus 4 is 26, and then 5i plus 24i is 29i. Okay? <clears throat> now, it is possible to multiply and not get something that's complex. You can get something that's simpler than complex. Here's a good example right here. These two numbers are called conjugates of each other. You may have heard of that before. Conjugates are where you're repeating the same two pieces, but one is an addition and one is a subtraction. Okay? If you multiply conjugates, you're always going to end up with a completely real number only. And that's actually important to remember for other situations. So right here, when I multiply, I get 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times negative 2i is negative 14i. 2i times 7 is plus 14i. And then 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Okay, but a couple of things here. First of all, minus 14i plus 14i, those are going to result in 0, right? Because they add the 0. And also, don't forget, the i squared here is negative 1. So instead of minus 4i squared, what I really have is plus 4 value. Okay? So combining like terms, of course, gives me the 0 for these. And then 49 plus 4 is 53. So notice multiplying two complex numbers ended up in a real number. Technically, a real number is also a complex number because it's plus 0i. We just don't write that portion, okay? But don't forget, multiplying conjugates always gets you a real value, okay? And that's where uh, it becomes important here, division. There is no actual division when it comes to doing complex numbers because there's too many uh, different pieces and things like that. Instead, what we do is we fix it and make it look like a multiplication or just a, a fraction simplification, okay? So instead of having a, a compound or a complex denominator, I'm going to convert it so that it has a monomial denominator, a single term denominator, by using the same trick. I'm going to look at the denominator, and I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. So right here, 8 plus 9i, I'm going to do 8 minus 9i, okay? But of course, it's not legal for me just to multiply the bottom. I would have to multiply the same thing in the numerator, right? Because then basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by a value of 1, something over itself. So I'm not changing the overall total value, but I am manipulating where the i's will appear now. Okay, so then this is equal to 3 times 8 is 24, times negative 9i is minus 27i. Uh, negative 7i times 8 is negative 56i. And negative 7i times negative 9i would be positive 63i squared. All right. In the bottom, I'll have 64 uh, minus 72i plus 72i. 
and negative 81 I squared. Okay, so let's simplify a little bit. These two are going to be zeroed out. Don't forget that. That was the whole point. That's the reason we picked the conjugate on that one. My denominator is going to be 64 plus 81. Because remember, I squared is negative 1. Negative, negative is a positive. Okay? In the top, I'll have 24 minus 63. Because again, I squared is negative 1. And I'm bringing together those two like terms. And these two right here are already like terms. Negative 27i minus 56i. So that's negative 83i in the numerator there, right? Okay, so let's finish it up <clears throat> by combining these, right? I would have negative 39 minus 83i over 64 plus 81. I have 145, okay? A lot of times people will say it's okay to leave it like this, which you know that it's still a complex number, especially you can see it in the numerator. But just in case, don't forget, this needs to be a complex number in the sense of it has a real part and an imaginary part. So you may also have to write it like negative 39 over 145 uh, minus 83 over 145i so that it has that real and imaginary separated part. All I'm doing is I'm distributing the denominator to each piece right there, right? <clears throat> okay, so I, I hope this little sidetrack helps you throughout this course whenever we're dealing with complex numbers.